Do you really know what's going on when you start praying in the spirit? It's so important that you catch what is taking place when you pray in the spirit because there's a lot of knowledge that God hides while you're praying in the spirit to bring to you about strategy, strategies and decisions. There are some aspects of decision making that you won't know until you pray in the spirit. All throughout your week, there'll be an opportunity to get away from praying in the spirit. So you, you have to take praying in the spirit by force. You got to do it by force. If you're not praying in the spirit, there's a lot of instructions that you're missing. Here's what happens when you pray in the spirit. The brain begins to collect something that you were supposed to do, but you forgot. Praying in the spirit is the same like making a grocery list. In some cases, not all cases, but in some cases, you have a documentation reminded to your soul of what to do. That's why you see in the book of Acts, when they started experiencing the Holy Spirit filled them, they was praying in the spirit. Now, what began to take place? They all knew what to say and do and how to live because it was hidden in praying in the spirit. So when you pray in the spirit, mysteries are being revealed to you and mysteries are dealing with how your life is supposed to go. Mysteries are dealing with what you're supposed to become. Mysteries are dealing with what you're supposed to say, how you're supposed to be. If you don't pray in the spirit, you'll lack knowledge about a situation. Number one, when you pray in the spirit, you are humbling yourself to receive the correct interpretation of a thing. You can attempt to know something by intuition. You can attempt to know something based upon observation or based upon instinct. Did you know that instinctual knowledge is often flawed? Because the instinct is not linking up with the truth. It's linking up with natural Natural reasoning is linking up with natural observation. But for you to know a thing, you need to pray in the spirit. So what happened in the book of Acts was the reason why the glory of God was so great and mighty. Because while they was praying in the spirit, they was tapping into the mystery of the atmosphere the Holy Spirit wanted to release his power. They was tapping into it. They understood what to do, what to say, and how to activate that power. That's why you see Apostle Paul is using handkerchiefs. He's using handkerchiefs in one place because the handkerchiefs is dealing with what? Is dealing with a mystery that was given to Apostle Paul. He did not know that before then. He understood I can transfer the power of God to this handkerchief simply because of prayer and the spirit. So he wasn't going to even find out that knowledge if he didn't pray in the spirit. You notice what Apostle Paul said in the text. He said, I wish that you all prayed in the spirit as much as I did. He was saying, I wish that you prayed in the spirit as much as I did. So what is Apostle Paul really saying? He got a transference and he benefited from praying in the spirit because he was contacting knowledge that other people they had no access to. While he prayed in the spirit, there was knowledge being given to him that wasn't offered to other people. And they were believers. He had the boldness to minister to the Gentiles greater than Peter. But he was praying in the spirit greater than Peter. Peter, uh, both in the apostolic, they're both in the New Testament. They're both having the Holy Ghost. But the boldness is strong in Apostle Paul because he's praying in the spirit. So you understand that when you pray in the spirit, now I'm going to get even deeper on this. This is going to be so mighty. When you pray in the spirit, you start to have a boldness for the things of God that he reveals to you about how your life should go. You become bold about it. Now, I want to talk to you about a dimension of praying in the spirit that unleashes the gifts of the Holy Ghost. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the gift of prophecy, uh, the working of miracles, uh, the gift of faith, the gifts of healings, uh, tongues, the interpretation of tongues. 
the gifts of the spirit, the discerning of spirits, the gifts of the spirit, they are released through prayer in the spirit. The more a person prays in the spirit, spontaneously you'll begin to flow in the gifts. Why? Because praying in the spirit is the area in which God, he is operating, he's moving, and he's doing supernatural things. While you're in that area, that's why you see the church when they're praying, they're praying in the spirit. And look, an angel appears to Peter and gets him out of jail. But look, how does the angel appear to Peter? Through the avenue of their prayer in the spirit. While they're praying in the spirit, angelic ministry is released from heaven to earth to now get Peter out of a death sentence. If they didn't pray in the spirit, they would have never experienced that deliverance for Peter. So I want you to hear me. This is why it's so important that you pray for your man of God. Because Peter was a man of God over these people. And while Peter is praying, while, while they're praying for Peter, he gets free from how the gates of hell is coming up against him. So Peter's angelic encounter was completely initiated by the prayers and the fervent prayers in the spirit of the people that was underneath Peter, that was learning from Peter, that was standing by Peter. That's why when you are praying in the spirit, there are moments where angels are visiting your life. Sometimes it's not forever. It's for a temporal assignment, but they are giving you a deposit of all for something. There are angels that give man scrolls when you pray in the spirit. They give you knowledge that you need for tomorrow, for the week that you're going into, for the month that you're heading into. You receive that through prayer in the spirit. Is it, it, it is very true that you cannot be complete and wholesome unless you place a demand on praying in the spirit. Now, when we deal with prayer in the spirit, we also deal with um, a book of Corinthians. I think that's chapter 13 that talked about if I speak in the tongues of angels. When you pray in the spirit uh, with, with full focus, with undivided uh, focus, your focus is clear and it's sharp. You step into different categories of prayer in the spirit. There's a prayer in the spirit where we are dealing with the tongues of angels. The tongues of angels is the language in which angels speak in and they release this language for also them to do their ministries as angels. They use this tongues of angels in order to converse with the father about secretive matters. Every angel has a different tongue because they have a different theme of conversation with God. The financial angels are dealing with finances. So they are financial tongues. Because when we say financial tongues, that bracket of angelic is for finances. And the conversation between them and the father is on financial matters. But then we got the angel of deliverance, Psalm 34. That angel tongues is on deliverance. It is to bring deliverance to whoever needs it. And when you pray in tongues, you can be an intercession for somebody's soul to be set free from spirits. So you see that the tongues of angels are carrying different themes, subjects, different things that the angel is assigned to accomplish. Many people don't even know that Lucifer had a, a, a tongue. Lucifer used to pray in tongues to be guardian cherub. That was the language that Lucifer had. That spiritual language was predicated on Lucifer being the best as a guardian cherub, a cherubim. Lucifer was excelling in that angelic tongue. Lucifer understood all of those things. So there, there was a place, even in the heavenlies, where angels would pray. So God created the angelic and man to need prayer, to converse with him, and to speak to him 
in secretive form about secretive matters. That's why sometimes you'll need to pray in the spirit because what you're praying about in the spirit, it doesn't have anything to do with the emotional uh, words that you want to produce. You want to say something in the emotional realm. You want to talk in the emotional realm. And that's not going to be the correct prayer. When you pray in the spirit, the Holy Ghost is making intercession for you with the correct language, the correct theme, and the correct focus in that prayer. That's why praying the spirit is so effective because you can say things in the natural that's driven by emotion. You can say things in the natural that's driven by weariness. Lord, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. You can say stuff in the natural that's driven by weakness. You say something and that thing is weakening you. But when you pray in the spirit, it's complete built up. Remember what the Bible says in Jude chapter one. You build up yourself in your most holy faith. So imagine most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. So the most holy faith, which means the faith that is the highest in the God realm, the faith, the most holy faith is a dimension of faith that is immersed in the throne of God. It's from the soul of God. The most holy faith, it means that you, you have other holy faiths, but it's not the most. Just think about that. Imagine having different dimensions of faith, but it's not the most holy faith. It says you build up yourself in your most holy faith. Do you want to get to the maximum? Think about that. Do you want to get to the maximum of your holy faith? It says build up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. So, but the, watch what the Bible says. Building up yourselves. It didn't say God going to build you. Just think about it. It doesn't say that God is going to build you up. So many people wait for God to build them up. It said building up yourselves. You are the one that's doing the building. So it, the same way. Have you ever seen a construction worker that you pay for? Or you ask somebody, a plumber to come fix your thing, and they stand over your toilet and they say, uh, I'm waiting for the Lord to put this toilet back together. No, you hired them because you wanted them to build a problem solution, uh, a solution to the problem. And you want them to build on that cabinet or build on that, that, that new, new equipment on, the, on that uh, uh, thing that you're trying to fix. The same way, you, when you're building up yourself, you are the one now being entrusted with this mission. It's not for nobody. It's not for the Lord. It's not for angels. It's not for uh, nobody else on the other end. It's simply you got to build up your own self. So imagine if you don't build up your, your own self by praying in the Holy Ghost, there are levels of faith that you don't have any entryway into. So you can't get into it. You can't access it. You can't walk in it. Now, here's the powerful thing about faith when we deal with praying in the spirit. Faith is really an invisible substance that causes things to appear. Faith is not just a quality in someone's belly. You know, a lot of people say, I have faith. Having faith and um, uh, having faith um, and uh, possessing faith is two different things. If you possess faith, you're in Romans chapter 12. God dealt to every man the measure of faith. That's the possession. Having faith is what Jesus was saying. He said, do you have faith? If you have faith, the size of a mustard seed. So having faith is the usage of faith. Possessing faith, you can still be in fear. Possessing faith, you can still be in other doubt and unbelief. All right. Thomas had Possess faith. But John was in the have faith. Thomas possessed faith and still didn't believe that Jesus rose from the dead. But John has faith. He's at the cross. All right. So um, there was other women that followed Jesus that possessed faith. But Mary Magdalene had faith. Ain't that something? Mary Magdalene had faith because she had the cross. You see? So the having is so different because it is the usage of the quality. 
So, so you could be able to play the piano, but if you don't have no piano, you don't have piano. Uh, you, you don't have piano playing. You have, you, you possess the ability to play the piano, but there's no playing of the piano in your life. So therefore, we don't hear the sounds of music. Well, hear what goes with faith. You can possess faith, but if you don't have faith, we don't hear the sound of abundance of rain going on in your life. Or we don't hear, we don't hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind like the Holy Ghost moving in the day of Pentecost, uh, Acts chapter 2. So you go from moving from the possession of faith, you get into the having of faith, and that's when the new man comes forth. When you have faith, you understand that it is tied into you speaking in tongues. Having faith is you using all of the weapons that God has given you. And for you to stay in flow with these weapons, you need to pray in tongues. Because uh, praying in tongues, we have cell phones, right? Praying in tongues is a system update. Uh, the system update is for your phone to get to the current version in which they have released in that cell phone company. So like well, every update that they have, the software update, you click on it for your phone to update. Well, when you pray in the spirit, you get updates. You get updates on relationships. You get updates on desires that you want to uh, use to complete something. You get updates on decisions you want to make. You get updates on your finances. Just think about this. The next time you pray in the spirit, use your imagination. The imagination is often used unwillingly, unknowingly rather. You use your imagination all the time. Even if you get hungry right now, you start imagining what you should eat. God gave man the imagination so that you can link it to the measure of faith. And it opens up your eyes to see in the spirit. So let me just tell you something that... Uh, um, I started doing um, years ago. So in my imagination of what I was reading the word by angels, I started having those encounters with the angels because my imagination had linked up with faith, which opens the eyes to see. The eyes cannot often see because your imagination has only dealt with things that are perverted. It deals with things that are self-destructive. Even somebody imagines how to get revenge. Somebody imagines how to um, how to retaliate. People in gangs imagine how to find their opt. Uh, they call them lacking because they don't have protection at the time. So all throughout life, people are using their imagination. Cooks use their imagination for recipes. Cops use their imagination for tickets. <laughs> they're imagining who they're going to pull over to give a ticket. Um, firefighters, they imagine extinguishing a fire. Judges imagine giving verdicts. Um, we're looking at uh, uh, people at Chick-fil-A. The workers are imagining taking orders with the right spirit because that's what their boss told them. Everybody be high energy. You got to show customer service at the highest level, excellency. So imagination is always at work even when you're serving Satan. When you're serving the Lord, you have to learn to use the imagination as a stomping ground for you to get to the next dimension of uh, seeing in the spirit correctly. So here's what happens as you read the word, as you meditate on the teachings of your prophet, as you pray in the spirit, you are purging the imagination from deception. This opens up the way. For you to have more encounters with angels talking to you. Well, why does an angel talk to you sometimes? And then sometimes is the Holy Ghost talking to you. What's the difference in that? Like what? Why do, was a, would an angel talk to um, uh, Mary about the Holy Ghost overshadowing her? Why didn't the Holy Ghost talk about uh, overshadowing her? Here's the secret. Angels talk to men because they have a part in your conversation cell in your brain. You have a conversation cell in your brain. One of it is for God. One of it is for angels. So when the man started, he fell and he wanted to find out if he was going to live or not. 
the angel, and he went go inquire of a fake God, uh, you know, inquire of Satan. The angel came down and talked to Elijah and said, go tell that man he shall die because he didn't inquire of me. He went go inquire of a false God. Well, the angel is talking to Elijah. Elijah has a portal in his brain for angelic conversation. Angels have a job to talk to man. This is their part in their work and field. Now, here's the uh, wild thing about this. You hear angels talking to you all the time, but most times those are angels that have fallen. So they give you ideas that even if it seems correct, is wrong. The ideas bring you into wrong relationships or wrong pathways or wrong choices. But you're hearing that idea from an angel. Remember, lust is the ability to stare. It's not the ability to look. Looking does not carry lust. Staring carries lust. That's why when you stare, it is you overlooking. You mean you're looking over. Uh, staring is reviewing. So um, for anybody to even operate in lust, they have to stare. In Sodom and Gomorrah, remember, the angels wanted to, um, the, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to sleep with the angels. But what was the angels doing? They was in the presence of uh, Lot. The people in Sodom and Gomorrah were staring at them. And when they were staring at them, here's the rising of lust. So even when you're at your workplace, when you're around anybody, you can stare um, and then you'll create things in your imagination that wasn't supposed to be there. Just think about that. It wasn't supposed to be there. It was never supposed to be there, but the staring produced it. So you got to think about this. Oftentimes in life, when you start to stare at something too long, you start to hear another voice. It's not God anymore talking. It's the spirits that was connected to the stare. Now, if you watch and look away, you actually don't have a, a, a pattern of welcoming in your soul. For spirits to talk with you about something. But you start to lust through staring. So always remember this. Even if somebody walked past you at the workplace. Why would you stare at them knowing that you're single? What is that going to do for you? Now you just opened up a door of weakness in your mind. Many times people, they get amused by staring. But it corrupts you and creates all type of spiritual warfare that you don't want. And then oh, at the end of the day... Now you're wrestling with your imagination tempting you because that's what the demon used through your staring. So that's why you see Satan wants to pit Jesus on the high place to show Jesus the kingdom of this world. Wants Jesus to stare at them so that Jesus will pick that over the father's will. So even Satan was using the law of staring to create lust because when lust is conceived, it creates sin. When sin is conceived, it produces death. Praying in the spirit, it lets you take control of yourself again. When you pray in the spirit, even for an extended amount of time, when nobody is around you, when you're by yourself, you take back control of yourself. You start to purge yourself mentally of distractions and you are opening back up the portal of your imagination to faith, to the presence of God, to the promise of God, to the power of God. And ultimately what that does, you're not going to be having the same schedule in your time because now the Holy Spirit is going to be able to guide you, check you, anoint you, pitch you in another place mentally. I just want you to think about this from now on. When you pray in the spirit, you're going to be receiving imaginations of what you are supposed to do and what you are supposed to say. You're going to receive a list of things that you're supposed to focus on. When you pray in the spirit, be ready for conversations and be ready for angelic ministry for you and to you. Because this is what prayer does. When you pray in the spirit, you are bringing your soul back subject to the power of Jesus. That's what you want. You don't want anything, any other power influencing you. 
And remember what I told you when you pray in the spirit, remember what the Bible says in John, the Holy Ghost shall teach you all things. He shall bring all things to your remembrance. Even that what I said unto you. So when you pray in the spirit, you're reminded of what you're supposed to remember. Just think about that. Satan will come to snatch the word, but praying in the spirit will remind you of that word, secure that word, protect that word. So if you're supposed to do something, Satan having you focus on something else so that you don't do it. The praying in the spirit will remind you, oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. I wasn't supposed to talk to this person. I wasn't supposed to go there mentally. I wasn't supposed to experience that emotionally. I wasn't supposed to let myself uh, dwell on that. And when you pray in the spirit, lastly, remember this. It keeps you in surrender. Surrender means that you're no longer handling situations in your own human power. You are handling them in the power of God. And whatever strategy he gives you, that strategy becomes your reality. And you believe with all your heart that it will work. That's what surrender does. And when you pick your investment of faith in that strategy, now we're looking at the glory of God falling, the power of God falling to fix all things and to add all other things to you. So you pray in the spirit because the word of God says in Corinthians, it edifies you, which means that it lifts you up and it gives you new strength and the new mentality that you're supposed to have about situations. Um, you have a phone percentage, you have a soul percentage. And praying in the spirit is charging the soul like your battery charges your phone. And your battery, when your phone is not charged at a high percentage, your battery starts to miss uh, uh, certain functionalities in the phone. Like your, your phone starts to glitch, starts to go slower, it starts to freeze, because it is losing percentage. Well, that's what happens to your mind when you're not praying in the spirit. You start to glitch. You start to have errors. You start to uh, freeze. You can't see certain things. So think about this.